Hi, my name is Sean Casey. I'm the test system engineering manager at Circuit Checks Maple Grove facility. What I'd like to discuss with you today is considerations for test systems. You've already got your test requirements and your intended use spec, which defines the environment the system is going in. And now it's time to design up the system. Um, first thing I'd like to discuss is test equipment. Um, when it comes to test equipment, uh, there's a big difference between between whether you're building a DVT tester or a manufacturing test system. In the case of a DVT test system, you're looking more at precision, not so much at throughput. And when it comes to manufacturing, you're looking at throughput to prove that the system was built correctly, but maybe do not need the precision that's necessary for a DVT tester. Also in the case of a DVT tester, you're not likely to use a mass interconnect that you would in manufacturing and so there, there is a large difference. The other thing is um, calibration of the DUT. If you know that you need to calibrate the DUT, those things need to be taken into account when you decide how to get from the test equipment to the dot. Here's an example of a test system with a PXI uh, rack in it, some AC power supplies, and some RF equipment which will be used to do calibration of the dot. You'll notice that there's also a lot of equipment inside the fixture. There's programmers, there's uh, interfaces for communication, and the reason for that is those do not handle distances very well of being put in a rack, run through a mass interconnect, and up to the DUT. The other thing to keep in mind when, you, when you're building a test system such as this, please check for obsolescence and make sure that the test equipment you select will not go obsolete uh, in a short period of time. In this case, these power supplies needed to be added in the generation two because the existing power supplies went obsolete. That means you have a configuration issue, you also have to change your software and so forth. The other thing to consider is your PC that's in the system. Whether it's embedded in the PXI chassis or whether it's a standalone PC, you need to keep in mind that the motherboards will go obsolete. We uh, suggest using an industrial uh, PC and also check and see what the life of the motherboard is. When you come to make duplicate systems, you'll be happy you did because you'll be able to simply take the, the image off of the current system, place it on the new system, and you'll hit the ground running. Another thing to consider in the selection of racks is footprint. As you can see here, this is a half height rack, everything fits in here. You have a very heavy fixture that needs to go on top. It's, it's ergonomically at the right height, but for this system, a half height rack worked well. In cases where floor space is an issue, you may decide to go vertical and go with a taller rack and bring the equipment up higher. One thing about racks uh, we found in the case of some of the taller racks, um, make sure you understand how much weight is going into that rack. Uh, a lot of times this is a place where people want to cut corners. Uh, we built a rack, build to print, lots of heavy power supplies, lots of equipment. Uh, went to try to pull out the power supply in the bottom, couldn't get it out because actually the whole bottom of the rack oil canned under the weight of the test system. Uh, the rack is not a place to cut corners. Please make sure that it it's rated for at least as much, if not twice as much, as you, you want to use. The other thing about racks is serviceability. Uh, in the case of serviceability, putting some ancillary things like uh, maybe some power supplies, uh, maybe some ethernet ports, USB ports, um, things like that, as well as fuses. Some people prefer to put them onto drawers that have to go in and out. You have to screen relief the cables. Some people like to put them on a panel that you got to disconnect to take out. Uh, here what you'll see is uh, these, these parts were placed on the side of the rack. It's a 24 inch rack and they were placed on the side of the rack. So with two quarter turn screws you can get at all the fuses and any of the uh, communication equipment that's in there to try to troubleshoot it. It's very accessible and easy to get at. The other thing to consider with these racks is your safety considerations. 
Um, in the case of this, you see there's an e-stop. Um, also, there's some lamps here. Um, you, you should have a power distribution unit in there, uh, which contains a safety switch and also some contactors. When you hit this switch, you want to see both legs of power turned off. You also want to see your air go through a dump valve and disable that. Another consideration is working height. Whether it's one of these half racks or a full height rack, make sure that your mass interconnect is sitting at a, at a point where your fixture is at an easy working height for the uh, user. Um, another thing to look at with this and consider is what type of keyboard interface you want. In the case of this, we have a keyboard that, that uh, is off to the side. It can go up and down. There's also, by using uh, touch screen monitors, you could do that, or you can have the keyboard integrated into here. Okay, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the Mass Interconnect. There's many vendors out there with the Mass Interconnect. However, this is one example that, uh, that is probably the most reliable and will provide the best performance. And this interface uh, connects to the PXI chassis through PC cards. Um, Everything is brought out. It comes out to the same interface as you'll see here. Uh, there is a cost to that. However, if you're looking for high performance, repeatability and reliability, we believe this is one of your best solutions. Uh, the, other, there's, the other interfaces that are out there, uh, there's interfaces that uh, you cable up to where you can buy a cable and cable up to. Those are perfectly acceptable they tend to plug directly into your PXI or your big box system and then they come out via cable direct to the mass interconnect. Uh, here what you'll see is the 2270 interface. This has been around for about 40 years but one unique thing with the 2270 interface is um, we have built some drop down cards so that we can cable over to it. Uh, what you want to avoid with your mass interconnect is to have a lot of discrete wiring going to it um, because remember this is the place where things fail is through connectors. Also remember at the end of the day you're going to need to be able to calibrate your system if you're running through a mass interconnect. There's losses through RF connections, there's losses through the cable and when you get done uh, you will have to run a correlation routine if you're going to use a mass interconnect. In the case of a DVT tester you're probably better off going direct from the equipment to the actual DUT itself. So thank you for watching this video series that we put together with National Instruments on designing and building a test system. Should you have any questions or if there's any way that we can help you, please reach out to us at circuitcheck.com.